Welcome to the August 2022 edition of Open Source Matters, where we cover the latest news in open source technology. I'm your host, Ben Lloyd Pearson. Let's dive in. The Linux Foundation is back with another wonderful report. This time, they partnered with Sneak to publish a report titled Addressing Cybersecurity Challenges in Open Source Software. The report includes new research and the results of a survey they sent to open source maintainers and contributors, developers of proprietary software, and individuals who focus on supply chain security. The main highlight centers around the confidence organizations have about the security of the open source software they use, with only 24% of respondents indicating they are confident in the security of their direct dependencies. This is concerning because according to their research, the average project has more than 68 direct dependencies, with this number nearly tripling for certain languages like JavaScript, which has a tendency to focus on smaller libraries that serve a single purpose. Their analysis also discovered that the average software project has more than five critical security vulnerabilities, and the overall number of vulnerabilities in projects of all severities vary quite a bit depending on the language it's written in. It's not all bad news, however. The study also showed that it's common practice for developers to monitor industry vulnerability notifications and to use automated monitoring for known vulnerabilities. The survey also shows that developers are taking a broad range of approaches to handle security concerns, including incorporating security scans into their continuous integration tooling, using static code and software composition analysis tools, and monitoring public vulnerability databases. Go check out the report on the Linux Foundation website if you want to learn more. The Software Freedom Conservancy is calling on all open source developers to abandon GitHub and move to open source alternatives. In a scathing blog post hosted on the SFC site, they listed major concerns they have with GitHub's use of open source code to train the machine learning models behind their Copilot software. If you don't know, Copilot is a product that GitHub markets as an AI pair programmer that makes automatic code recommendations based on code comments that you write. GitHub used open source code hosted on their platform, among other things, to train their recommendation models. GitHub recently stopped offering Copilot as a free service, and they now charge users a monthly fee, a move that's considered controversial in the open source community because it's viewed as a way of profiting off the hard work of open source developers. Meanwhile, the SFC claims to have made multiple attempts to get answers about what data GitHub uses to train these models and to clarify their policies about intellectual property that's hosted on their platform. Now, after months without a satisfactory answer, the SFC has launched GiveUpGitHub.org, where they provide information and resources to help developers leave GitHub for open source platforms like GitLab, GitT, and Codeberg. Whether or not your opinion is as strong as the SFC, if you've thought about trying alternatives to GitHub, go check out GiveUpGitHub.org to learn more. Now we have a story that involves GitHub's parent company, Microsoft. Since our last episode, Microsoft made, then reversed, a controversial decision that affects developers who publish software to the Microsoft App Store. Back in June, Microsoft quietly updated Microsoft App Store policies, with one of those changes being a line that states apps may not attempt to profit from open source or other software that is otherwise generally available for free. Giorgio Sardo is a general manager for the Microsoft App Store, and he stated on Twitter that Microsoft's intention is to protect customers from misleading listings. It seems they may have some issues with publishers who repackage open source projects that they have no association with into paid products, presumably in an effort to trick unsuspecting users. However, many people express concern on social media that this would also affect open source communities who monetize their Windows app to provide financial support to the development team. This would have particularly negative impact on projects like Krita and Shotcut, two open source projects that do exactly that. Well, in mid-July, after a brief delay in enforcement, Microsoft reversed this decision and removed the controversial language from the App Store policy. Sardo went back to Twitter to let the community know that Microsoft is committed to enabling open source developers to publish their work to the Microsoft App Store and advise people with concerns about intellectual property abuse to report them via their IP infringement portal. Look, I know there are a lot of people who have problems with Microsoft because of past transgressions, but I think this is a great example of the developer community being vigilant at holding organizations accountable and the organization responding with a solution that accounts for the needs of their developer community. Everyone makes mistakes, and I'm happy to see an organization like Microsoft making up for their own. 
Now it's time for the open source launch rapid fire. Here are the new projects we're watching. Alma Linux build system. The Linux distro best known for having the fastest build system this side of CentOS has published that very same build system as an open source project. This lets anyone replicate the build process they use to provide a totally open source competitor to Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Peridot. Following the lead of the previous project, Rocky Linux has also published their own build system under the Peridot moniker, adding heat to the competition in the space downstream of CentOS. Pulsar, a runtime observability tool for IoT devices. AI Reference Kits, a set of open source implementations of AI models from Intel for specific use cases, including a conversational chatbot, visual quality control, document digitization, and asset health prediction. That's your Open Source Matters for August 2022. We'll see you next month.